Well, Christmas is almost here. It's right around the corner. Uh, many of you have already uh, celebrated uh, Christmas with parts of your family. Now, some of that I know because I stalk you on Facebook. Uh, I might not post a lot, but I look a lot. So, <laughs> I'm looking forward uh, to uh, our time of uh, of Christmas celebration as well, and, and my family and. As I said uh, before, that I really look forward to and enjoy uh, Christmas Eve uh, at my mom and dad's house. That's my time to go and, and to be a kid and, and to have a good time and have good food. And it's one of the, uh, the few times of the year that the whole family comes together, my brother's children and uh, everyone there. And uh, we just have a, a wonderful time. And as I think about that, I, I pray this year that, that as we do that, that we, we have that opportunity to celebrate family and that we have a good time. But I also pray that as we do that, and I pray that as you get together and continue to celebrate with your families, that we remember that we have reason to rejoice at Christmas. Amen? We have a reason to rejoice. We've been talking about that for, for several weeks now. And, and, and again, we continue with that today, that we need to rejoice in the gift that God has given us. God has given us a, a, an awesome gift in Jesus Christ. Now, when we think about Christmas gifts, we think about biblical Christmas, which really is the only Christmas there is. Uh, a lot of times, we think about the the wise men and the and the gifts that that they brought. The um, Bible says that they presented him uh, gifts of, of gold and, and frankincense and and myrrh. Those were gifts. I found a thing uh, where someone wrote what it would have been like if the one thing that, that we realize is probably true about those gifts, there was no wrapping paper involved. Has anybody ever read in there where it says and they, 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 there was wrapping paper involved? There was no wrapping paper in, involved in those gifts, but uh, someone wrote uh, what it would have been like, and I thought this was, was pretty good, what it would have been like if, if those had been, it's there on the screen, and lo, the gifts were encompassed about with seven square cubits of paper, and the paper was covered within and without pictures of Frosty, a man of snow, and Joseph purposed in his heart to cast the paper into a barrel of refuse, but Mary saith unto him, cease, man, Drop that decorative parchment. It should be set aside for future generations. And Joseph did us roll his eyeballs. Men don't laugh. You'll be in trouble. <laughs> and it came to pass that the babe was more interested in the paper than the, the gift. You know, if there was wrapping paper involved, it probably uh, uh, would have would have said that. These words, uh, again, are are not, um, not in the Bible. But there's some things that, that we can learn by the fact that uh, 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 these gifts were given and they were not in wrapping paper. There are two things that we can understand that uh, why they probably weren't was uh, these folks were wise. We call them wise men. They were wise. It wasn't in paper. And they were men. <laughs> they weren't in wrapping paper. Now, I did uh, give Jay a personal invite out there because Jay is one of those guys that's like really good at, at, at everything like that, that's meticulous and all that. And he told me he's like an expert gift wrapper. So I expect to see uh, Jay, see his family's back there. No, that's not true. Well, we're going to see because I hope he comes Thursday night to, uh, to the gift wrapping. But we know that this was probably didn't include wrapping paper because it was men. Men, uh, most men don't like wrapping presents. They don't do real uh, real well at it. I believe it was probably men who first invented the gift bag. I believe it was probably a man who went to the store, who came home with a gift for his wife, and he stopped and thought, you know, I could, I could wrap this gift in some paper. Nah, that'd just take her long, longer before she got to cook it. We all know that's not true in my house. <laughs> the delivery people bring it in a bag to our house. <clears throat> but the gift bag uh, was invented um, 
most likely by men. And, and again, I want to take this this opportunity uh, uh, just in the spirit of Christmas to invite you again to uh, to come down and, and and to go with us Thursday night to the Palmer Home. Uh, such a such a blessing. Uh, to go and, and be a part of that. Uh, if you like to have a good time, we have a great time. Uh, usually we watch Nate a lot. Nate uh, usually wraps like one gift to my five gifts. He's just, he's not like Jay. He's just, or like me. Okay, maybe it's backwards. Nate's kind of like a gift wrapping machine. He does a, a, a really good job, but we have a, a wonderful time. And uh, I pray that, uh, uh, that you guys will consider coming and, and doing that. But this Gifts that the wise men brought, the gifts that we'll wrap down there, those are all great gifts, but that's not the gift that I want to talk to you about this morning. I want to talk to you about the gift of God. We have reason to rejoice in what God has given us in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the, the gift from God to, to all the world. In 2 Corinthians nine fifteen, and, and really just our, our key verse today, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. You know, it's hard for me to put in words when, if someone were to come up in the streets, you know, you see these people, they go out and they do the little interviews. I always wondered how bad I would look like if Kirk Cameron came up and, and interviewed me. And, you know, I believe if he came up and said, I, I know you're a preacher and I want you to summarize uh, what Jesus is to you. Man, how hard is that? It's, it's, it's everything. Jesus is, is everything that makes life worth living. Jesus truly is a, a, an unspeakable and indescribable uh, gift that we receive from God. So I want to encourage all of you, and I've said this several times uh, already this month, don't let, uh, again, I know the weather changes and all that, and, and we get down and dreary, but, but J- Christmas, December, is a time when we of all people, Christians should be rejoicing and we should be celebrating because of all the things that go on in our life and, and all the things that tear us down. Jesus is the one thing that holds true and never changes and is, the again, the perfect unspeakable gift for us. Now, Jesus is described uh, in more than, than one place uh, in the Bible as a gift. Romans 6, uh, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Uh, Jesus is the, the gift that allows us to be reconciled to God. That's a reason for us uh, to rejoice. Uh, Jesus was wrapped. That gift that God gave us was wrapped, but he wasn't wrapped in gift paper. There were no pictures of Frosty. Frosty. In Luke 2, 7, it says, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. You know, I couldn't help but focus on that, that background. That was an awesome background, whoever uh, put that up there for uh, the song a while ago. But seeing that little, that little precious, innocent child, man, that's Jesus. That's how Jesus came to us. What a precious gift that is. What a reason uh, for us to uh, rejoice. Isaiah in Scripture. In the Old Testament, before Jesus ever came, he foretold about this, as as do many prophecies uh, all throughout the the Old Testament talk about Jesus who would be coming. But uh, Isaiah in particular says in 9-6 of Isaiah says, For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah looked look forward all these hundreds of years, and, and he saw some amazing stuff, wonderful stuff that was to come, the promises of God. God had given him this, this insight to, to know what would happen. And, and there, that, that precious little baby, they're born in a manger, was God's gift to us. There's so much that, that we have to uh, rejoice in that. And I think one of the reasons that, that we have that we can rejoice in that is that Jesus came to us as a gift in the flesh. Jesus came to, to us in, in the flesh uh, to live and to dwell uh, among us. It says uh, there in Isaiah again, unto us a child is born. First Timothy 3.16 says, and without controversy, uh, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. And John 1.14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we know in, in Hebrews chapter 5, it talks about Jesus being the high priest of man and, and how he came and he dwelt among us. It's so important that we understand that we truly have a real gift in Jesus. 
that we can look upon Jesus and, and know that he came as, as flesh and dwelt among us and, and he experienced a lot of the same things that, that you and I experience every day. Jesus can relate to what you're feeling right now. He came as, as flesh and, again, and, and dwelt among man. He fulfilled the prophecy that, that said that he would, it said that a child would be born. Folks, we should rejoice in that, that, that we have a Jesus to go to, you know, so often, and you might even be able to tell me as your pastor, maybe I've, maybe I've tried to console you about something, and, and to me, you might say, well, Chris, you, you don't know what I feel. You don't know what I'm going to, but Jesus does. I promise you that you're not going through anything that, that Jesus hasn't experienced something like or that Jesus doesn't understand what's going on in your life. And I pray that you rejoice in that uh, this morning and this Christmas season as you, um, you think about how much uh, God must have loved us to send Jesus to come and, and to take upon flesh and to dwell among us. This was necessary. This was necessary as, as Jesus would be a, a gift of, of reconciliation. Reconciliation between God and man. We know that the Bible teaches us that, that God's over here and, and we're over here, and, and, and that's because of, of sin. Sin that entered the world way back in the, in the Garden of Eden became a, a, a separation between man and God. But God loved us so much that he gave a, a gift of, of reconciliation in, in Jesus Christ. When we think about what, what happened in the, in the time of, of Noah, the world was wicked. God flooded the earth. You know, our, our world has continued to be wicked. Our world has continued to be separated from God, but God loved us enough that he, he sent his son Jesus to pay the price for our sins so that that sin that fills that big void out there, that big, big spot that, that separates us from God, Jesus' blood, wipe that away so that we can be reconciled to God. And I know that, that some of you are here today and say, well, that's awesome. You know, Christmas would be special for me this year, but there's some things in my life, there's some, there's some sin. There's some things that I need to get taken care of. Folks, what are you waiting on? Jesus Christ has already done everything that needs to be done so that that reconciliation can take place. When he shed his blood there on cross, he did so as being one who had never sinned. He came as flesh, but he didn't, he didn't come as the kind of flesh that we are that commits sin. He came as, as flesh that knew no sin, and yet he died on the cross for us. If you question this morning, if you're good enough, think about Paul on the, on the road to Damascus where, where he met Jesus, and guess what? God loved Paul, and, 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 and through Jesus, Paul also gained reconciliation to God. Paul had been one who killed Christians, but yet through Jesus, through God's grace and God's love and God's mercy, we see Paul as a, as a testimony all through the, the work of Christ of what God can do in someone's life when they become a new creation. That was all because of Jesus, all because of the, the gift that we have in that, that little baby in a manger and what he did. Jesus is not only a gift of reconciliation for us to rejoice over, but Jesus is a gift of inspiration. We think about, we think about that, that first Christmas, God sent his son, and the Bible tells us about angels singing. It tells us that, that, that wise men came and they, they, they brought gifts. It tells us that, that shepherds came and, and came and looked to the child. All these people were inspired to, to do these things. I pray this morning that you too will be inspired to do things in the name of Christ. Not things to, to glorify yourself or make you feel good about yourself, but it does make you feel good to do things for other people, amen? It does make you feel good to, to serve God and to be a reflection of Christ in this world, but I pray that you'll be inspired by the birth of Christ, by the sacrifice that Christ made, that you'll be inspired this Christmas to, to not just focus upon uh, getting gifts for your family, and there's nothing wrong with that. My daughter's getting all kinds of gifts. I used to get gifts, but... There is nothing wrong with getting gifts for your children and your, your family. But you know what? Look outside your inner scope. Look outside and, and, and give people the, the gift of Jesus. Look out and see who you can tell about Christ. And you know what? You might not have to look real far. You might have people in your own family. You may have people that will show up at Christmas when you come to celebrate that you know and, and you love, but you know that they don't know Jesus Christ. Take the time to invest in them. At some point, at some time, somebody told you about Jesus. Jesus. 
And I pray that's why you're here this morning, to celebrate the birth of Christ and to, to worship a risen Savior. But I pray that you'll let that inspire you to want to share with others this Christmas. Maybe it's not just your family. Maybe it's your coworkers. Maybe it's your neighbors. Maybe it's a stranger on the side of the road. But I pray that you'll be in, inspired just as these folks were. Jesus truly is the, the greatest gift. You know, again, as we said, there is uh, something about giving that it feels good. It feels good to give. There was a, an older lady that <clears throat> she had reached a time in her life it was hard for her to, to get up and, and to go out to the, to the store and, and to, to go shopping for her family. She had a big family. But she had gotten to a point in her older age, it was just hard for her to do that. So she said, you know, this year, I want to make sure everybody gets something special. I'm going to write them all a check, and I'm going to put it in a card and put a little note in there and say, go buy yourself something. That way I know they're going to get exactly what they want. Well, she got all the cards together, and at Christmas she gave them all out, and she didn't really get the reaction that she, she wanted. She didn't really understand why her family didn't respond the way that she expected. And a few days went by, and she thought, well, maybe that wasn't such a good Good idea. And she sat down at her desk and she reached in and she opened her drawer and there were all those checks. She never put the checks in there. She gave everybody a card that said, go buy yourself something. <laughs> you know, we, we like to, to give gifts. We like to receive gifts. And again, there is, there is nothing wrong with that at Christmas time. It's just a special thing that we do. Uh, again, there's nothing wrong with buying your kids gifts gifts at Christmas, but you make sure that, that they understand that there is something so much greater to Christmas than just getting those gifts. You see, I know that the Bible teaches us that it is better to, to give than to receive, but I tell you, there is one gift that it's so important that you receive, and that is the, the gift of Jesus Christ. Make sure you share that with your family this year. Make sure you share a, a special time of the reading of, of God's Word. When you come together, read about the birth of Christ. Read about that first Christmas and explain that to the people in your household and rejoice in the gift that God has given us. You know, when we, we talked about giving gifts, you know, sometimes you want to give gifts to, to everyone. And, and I'll be honest that, and I don't pat myself on the back, I love the, the thing. And I was taught by other people. Used to, I would be out, especially when I first got in the ministry, people love to, to buy a, a preacher's meal. People love to, if they see you out, they'll buy you a meal and leave. And I tell you, the preachers love that too, okay? But I, I learned from that, that that feeling that I got, wow, somebody cared enough about me that they went up there and they bought my meal that, you know, that means I should turn around and I should do that for, for someone else. And yesterday we were out and, and we went to, to eat and it was really we it was really really crowded when we we went in and and there were two older gentlemen there and i noticed they were talking there on opposite sides of the room and one of them one needed to move to our side because there wasn't enough space and i said well we'll move over but you're gonna have to buy breakfast and uh when i said that the one of them responded and said you know we couldn't even be here if it wasn't for my military pension and the other one talked about how they they went 30 years of life without seeing each other and uh, as I talked to these men, I found out these were some really awesome guys. One of them had, had served in Vietnam. He had uh, crashed, been shot down twice. He had crashed two planes in, in Vietnam. Uh, he even told me about, uh, after all that, that he was uh, uh, doing a mission. He was in the Navy. He was doing a mission in the Gulf and uh, saw a drug runner in one of the big, really fast boats. And he said that he didn't even have any guns on his plane, that all he was able to do was just to fly over and take pictures. And he flew over, and the guy started shooting at him. So he said he made a circle and put his flaps down and caused a bunch of turbulence and went back and he sunk that guy. And, of course, he notified the, the Coast Guard. But these were some really interesting guys. And uh, as we did that, you know, I told Tanya, I said, I want to thank these guys. Uh, one, one was uh, either Navy or Air Force, and, and the other one was uh, in the Army. And I said, I, I want to buy those guys lunch today or breakfast. So we went, and I, and I found them. Well, as I'm going up and I'm trying to find them, I see them sitting there, and I think, I, I think that's the same two guys. Then I look up, and I start looking around, and I see all kinds of people that I know. And I thought, my goodness, and I see people that I used to go to church with. I see some people that I, that I work with, and I thought, man, how am I going to do this now? If I buy theirs, i got to buy all theirs. I didn't really know what to do, so I just kind of visited for a few minutes trying to keep the rest of the people from knowing that I was buying these two strangers uh, food instead of buying the, uh, the rest because bo both were uh, 
uh, two sets of ladies. There were two ladies here, and over there was another uh, set of ladies, and, and I would have really liked to have bought theirs, but uh, I wouldn't have been able to buy mine if I bought everybody's. And, you know, that's kind of how we are. We look and we, we, we see people, and we'd love to be able to, to help everybody. We'd love to be able to, to buy everybody a gift this year. But unfortunately, we just, we just can't do that. But praise God that when it comes to God giving gifts, God was able to give a gift for everyone. When God gave the gift of Jesus, in John three sixteen, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you're here today and, and, and you're not sure, or you don't understand, or you don't think you're worthy of the gift of Jesus Christ, understand this morning that that gift is for each and every person in the whole entire world. It's for you. God loves you. God loved you enough that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for you. You see, God doesn't, doesn't give the way Chris gives. God gives the way only God can. And he gives out of love, the love that he has for you. I pray that you will rejoice this year and rejoice in the, the gift that, that God has, has given. As we continue to think about Jesus and think about reasons to rejoice this year, I encourage you to, to think about how much God must have loved us to give a, a gift like that. Think about that. Go back to John three sixteen. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only begotten son. Christmas is about a gift, a gift that's given freely. It's not about something that you earn. Guess who's worthy of the gift of Jesus in this room this morning? Not a single one of us. It's a gift. None of us are worthy of that gift that God gave us, but God loves you, and God gave that gift in Jesus. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. God loves you. Jesus loves you, and he gave himself for you. Again, even, even Christians, if you've known the Lord today for, for 50 years, I pray that you'll have a new sense of, of rejoicing this year when you stop and think how much that God loves you and how much this, this means. As we continue to think about Jesus and, and reasons to rejoice, we think about the crowns of Christ. Think about that, that crown of, of thorns. In John 19, 5, it says, And there came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. This is Jesus, the, the Son of God, came down from heaven. And for you and I, he wore a crown of thorns. They put that on his head. And he accepted it and he received it for you and I. And we can rejoice in that and, and rejoice not that, that Jesus died a terrible death. We rejoice in the fact that Jesus loved us enough that he accepted and he gave himself for that to pay the price for our sins. And we don't have to be, be caught up in the loss there because of the, the other crowns that, that Jesus had and the, the, the crown of glory in Hebrews 2.9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he that he, by the grace of God, would taste death for every man. Folks, God loves you, and we should rejoice in his gift. Revelations four fourteen. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat, like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Folks, there's coming a time when every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. What are you waiting on? Why not confess him today? Why not confess Jesus Christ as Lord of your life? You know, a gift is a gift. I, I don't see any gifts under this tree, but if there were a, a gift underneath that tree with, with my name on it, that gift would mean nothing and would have no worth to me if I didn't accept it. Folks, God paid a big price. He gave us his only begotten son so that you could rejoice this Christmas. Jesus paid a big price. He paid the ultimate price. But it's all worth nothing if you don't receive, 
if you don't receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. I pray today that you will rejoice in Christmas this year. I pray today that, that you will give thanks to God for this indescribable, this unspeakable gift that, that he has given us in Jesus. I pray that you'll have joy, and, and I just want to reach out. I know that there are, and, and I look, there's, there's multiple families here this year that, that have, have gone through suffering and hurt and, and, and sickness and, and illness and, and all kinds of different things. There are even those here who have who've lost loved ones. I encourage you to. This, this rejoice is, is for you as well. You rejoice in knowing that you have a God who loves you this much, that you have a God who, who sent his son Jesus for you. You have a, a God who loves you enough to promise you peace, a peace that passes all understanding. And one day we'll spend eternity in heaven with that God because of what Jesus did, because of that gift that's there before us. I pray today that, you know, walking over to that tree and, and picking up that gift is as simple as maybe you walking up here or, or right there where you're at and say, you know what, God? I'm not real sure about my salvation. I'm not real sure if I were to die today that I would, I would go to heaven. You see, God, because I'm not a real good person. I failed a lot. You know what God says? It's okay, I love you right where you are. I loved you enough that I sent Jesus. And today, if you'll just confess that you're a sinner, if you'll admit your failures, if you'll confess your need for a Savior, and if you believe that Jesus did come down from heaven and he did become flesh and he walked among men and he lived a sinless life and he gave that sinless life on the cross and then he rose from the grave, if, if you'll believe all that, and confess him as Lord and Savior. God says, I'll save you today. I give you a, a peace here on earth, and I'll give you an, a, an eternity promise that's beyond anything we can ever imagine. I pray that you'll do that today. I pray that if you're here today and you do know that you know that you know, that you'll rejoice today and you'll, you'll say, you know what, God? I want other people to have this peace and comfort that I have. God, set me on fire today. Send me out to tell other folks. I want this Christmas to be special for everybody I know. I give God glory for whatever he does during this invitation. Would you stand and pray with me?